I'm Maya Dubuk and I'm demonstrating my uh, bandpass filter circuit for lab 5A. Okay, so here is my um, active bandpass filter circuit. Um, everything up here is the active low pass filter and down here is the active high pass filter and these um, pink wires here are what's um, connecting them. So the only thing is I did have to use two op amp chips because Tinkercad only has the 741 um, op amp chip, not the LM348 that we were instructed to use in the lab. Um, it, it functions the same, it's just that it's one op amp per chip instead of the four that you would get with a um, LM348. So that's why everything's a bit more spread out and there are two chips instead of just the one. Um, so here in the low pass filter circuit, we see I have, this is R1, um, R2 and the capacitor are um, in parallel and they're both in series with R1, you can see through the connections. And we can see that the output connects back and feeds back into um, to the input via the, the resistor. Um, so down here in the high pass filter, we have capacitor one in series with resistor uh, three, and then that is in series with resistor um, four, which is connected to the output. And we see that the output feeds back into the input as it does in the um, low pass filter because they're both um, inverting op amps. So see here I have the, um, my function generator, the signal input is connected here to R1 in the low pass filter. Um, and I have out here, this oscilloscope is measuring the um, output of the low pass. This oscilloscope is measuring the final output um, at the end of the band pass. And this oscilloscope is measuring the, um, just the input. So we can, we know it, what it is because we're generating it, but just so we can visualize it. So I'm going to turn it on. Um, and we can see here we have two, this is the negative input. It's um, five volts, but it's connected in so that it's negative five. And this one is also five volts, but connected so that it's positive. Um, and this is my uh, 200, 250 millivolt um, amplitude signal, except it is through Tinkercad, you put in the peak to peak voltage. So it says, um, 500, but that's just because that's the peak to peak. So we can see here the three different um, sine waves. Um, this is our input. We can see that it is, this little thing is one volt top to bottom. So it's going to be 2.5 volt, um, I mean, you know, 0.25 volts, which is what we'd expect given our input of uh, 250 millivolts. Um, over here, we see this is two volts top to bottom. So we see that that's Pretty much what we would expect to see with a gain of 2.1 via the um, the low pass and over here we have this is four volts top to bottom so once again um, pretty much what we would expect to see we have a, a gain of about um, 5.6 volts um, and i can't demonstrate the uh, ac sweep on this simulation because tinkercad doesn't have that function so i'll be showing that through my lt spice simulation Okay, and this is my LT Spice simulation of um, the active bandpass filter. So we have over here is of course the low pass filter, everything on this side, and then everything on the right side over here is the high pass filter. Um, and we have uh, so an input here that's a, you can see it's a 2.5 um, AC amplitude, uh, and we're going to run that as an AC sweep with starting from one hertz to 100 kilohertz with um, 20 points as extracted in the lab. So if we run that, um, and then we're going to measure it at the output. Um, we can measure, also measure at the output of the um, low pass filter so we can compare. we can see here the blue is the output of the low pass filter and then the um, green is the output um, at the end of the entire band pass filter. So if we wanted to measure the, um, 
the maximum gain of the bandpass filter in the placer cursor. So we can measure that. Um, we're going to take it to its highest point. I'm just looking at, it's over here in the corner. It's uh, a little hard to see. There we go. I'm going to take it to its highest point, which is going to be, let's see. About 2.977 is about the highest um, gain in, in decibels, um, and that's out of frequency of about 563.6 hertz. Um, and then we can find the approximate um, 3 dB frequencies by adding another cursor and measuring that going to be down here in the bottom is when we're going to get the 3 dB. So I'm going to find the first one about there. So over here we can see that's where the frequency, that first 3 dB frequency, it's at about 19.4 hertz. And then let's go look at the second one. Move this over to the side again and get a little closer there uh, approximately there I have more precise values in my um, in my lab report for for this but that's at about 19.4 kilohertz so we can see that is what we would expect to see as I um, explain in my in my report okay and we can see here um, these are approximately our two 3 dB frequencies so um, this here would be the passband. Um, and we can see here this dotted line is the plot of the gain, I mean, I mean of the, the phase. So um, here would be the phase in the passband. And if we want to get a, a measurement of what that would be, we can move one of these over. So it's approximately on there. And we can look at that. Looks like about um, 45 degrees. Um, and if we take this one back and then move this one down over here, that's about negative 45 degrees. So the phase in the passband goes between negative um, 45 and 45 degrees. And if we wanted to, we could get the, the phase um, at about the the, the maximum gain was around here, I think. Um, yeah, that was the maximum. And if we bring this down here, bring it down there, that is a zero, um, a zero degree phase. So that is exactly what we'd expect because um, this uh, bandpass filter is made up of two inverting op amps. So the first one gets inverted, you'd get a about 180 degree phase out of the first output, um, and then you get that gets inverted again. So that brings us back to a 360 or zero degree phase. So that is what we would expect to see when it's a maximum gain.